When it comes to North Korea, the U.S. has concerns about more than just nuclear weapons. Over the past two decades, the U.S. has accused North Korea of making some of the best counterfeit money in the world. The so-called supernote, also known as superdollar or superbill, is a fake $100 bill believed to be one of the highest quality counterfeit banknotes ever detected. The U.S. government believes that a nation-state is behind the production of the supernote, with North Korea being the primary suspect. Although there is some doubt by observers and other governments that the North Korea is capable of creating supernote of the quality found. What has been confirmed is that the North Korea has passed off such bills in various countries and that the counterfeit bills circulate both within North Korea and around its border with China. The supernote circulated for perhaps years before the world community caught on. The first supernote in Hong Kong was detected in December 1989. At about the same time, another one surfaced after a money handler at the Central Bank of the Philippines told the U.S. Secret Service it didn't feel right. That bill, however, passed every other test at the time and the high-quality work inspired the original supernote moniker. In 1994, authorities in Hong Kong and Macau seized 430,000 U.S. dollars in supernotes from five North Korean diplomats and trade mission representatives. The sums are really insignificant in terms of the 1.9 trillion U.S. dollars in foreign exchange that flows across the planet daily, but media attention has put the bills on the map. On October 2, 2004, the container ship Ever Unique, sailing under a Panamanian flag from Yantai, China, berthed in the port of Newark. As cranes unloaded the vessel shipping containers, which were filled with a variety of commercial goods, dock workers singled out a container and placed it aboard a flatbed truck, which was driven to a warehouse a few miles away. There, FBI and Secret Service agents, acting as part of a sting operation, gathered around the container and cracked it open. Beneath cardboard boxes containing plastic toys, they found counterfeit $100 bills worth more than $300,000, secreted in false-bottomed compartments. The counterfeits were nearly flawless. They featured the same high-tech color-shifting ink as genuine American bills and were printed on paper with the same precise composition of fibers. The engraved images were, if anything, finer than those produced by the United States Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Only when subjected to sophisticated forensic analysis could the bills be confirmed as imitations. The Newark shipment marked their first known appearance in the U.S., at least in such large quantities. Federal agents soon seized more shipments. Three million dollars worth arrived on another ship in Newark two months later, and supernotes began showing up on the West Coast too, starting with a shipment of $700,000 that arrived by boat in Long Beach, California in May 2005, sealed in plastic packages and wrapped mummy-style in bolts of cloth. North Korea's government was producing high-quality counterfeit $100 bills and was working with criminal groups in China to sell the fake U.S. money internationally. In 2005, Sean Garland, the leader of the official Irish Republican Army and president of the Irish Workers' Party in Northern Ireland, was arrested. In that capacity, Garland travelled extensively to see socialist and communist party leaders in the Soviet bloc and, authorities contend, North Korea. The US accused Garland of using his official capacities with the Workers' Party and those entities' international associations and activities as vehicles for traveling, communicating, and meeting with persons abroad, including North Korean nationals engaged in the transportation, sale, and purchase of supernotes in quantities up to $1 million from 1997 to 2000 in Russia, Belarus, Poland, Denmark, the Czech Republic, and Germany. In September 2005, the U.S. Treasury Department announced that it was designating Banco Delta Asia, a bank in Macau with close ties to North Korea, a primary money laundering concern, a declaration that ultimately led to the shutting down of the bank and the freezing of several key overseas accounts belonging to members of North Korea's ruling elite. In a public statement, Treasury officials accused Banco Delta Asia of facilitating North Korea's illicit activities by, among other things, accepting large deposits of cash from North Korea, including counterfeit U.S. currency, and agreeing to place that currency into circulation. Macau sources told U.S. officials that when Banco Delta Asia ceased passing supernotes for Pyongyang, North Korea's agents moved their accounts to Chinese state-owned banks in the Zhuhai Special Economic Zone adjacent to Macau. 
according to the Los Angeles Times, immediately following the U.S. Treasury action in Macau, North Korea's flagship front company there, Zokwang Trading Company, closed its headquarters on the fifth floor of an office building near Banco Delta Asia, and most of its personnel have relocated to Zhuhai, just across the border in China proper. In April 2006, a Korean reporter claimed in an article in a South Korean newspaper that obtaining fake $100 bills that likely were manufactured in North Korea was a piece of cake in the Chinese town of Dondong, just across the North Korea's northern border. According to the reporter, counterfeit bills similar to real currency fetch about 40% of their face value. Carefully manufactured $100 supernotes go for $60 to $70 each. North Koreans refer to the counterfeit dollars as Katelio and the business of dealing in them as the Katelio game. In June 2016, a North Korean agent arrested by Chinese authorities for circulating counterfeit $100 banknotes in the border city of Dandong in Liaoning Province, northeastern China. It was reported that the agent brought $5 million in cash into China from North Korea in order to make payments for household goods and home appliances. These goods were supposedly distributed to North Koreans during the celebration of the birthday of the country's late founder, Kim Il-sung, as well as during its ruling Workers' Party's 7th Congress. But a number of the notes were found to be counterfeit when they were run through banknote counters by bank employees, so Chinese authorities ordered the relevant account frozen and arrested the North Korean agent. How many supernotes are in circulation, and what sort of provocation do they represent? The U.S. Secret Service noted that its agency has removed $50 million worth of supernotes from circulation. While it may still sound like a lot, it is insignificant relative to the $21 trillion U.S. GDP. When supernotes are discovered in a smaller foreign economy that makes use of the U.S. currency, they can cause a local crisis of confidence in the dollar, this has happened in Taiwan and Ireland, for instance. But in the United States, the economic threat is minimal. In October of 2013, the Treasury Department began circulating a new version of the $100 bill with enhanced security features, such as holograms, that are virtually impossible to counterfeit. However, many superdollars are still in circulation throughout the world. 